Trey Mann is having an excellent sophomore season for the Florida Gators and could be one of the more underrated point guards in the 2021 NBA Draft. This is Florence Ceiling, let's break him down. In 2019, Gainesville, Florida native Trey Mann chose to stay home and attend the University of Florida, but his first year didn't go as many had hoped. Mann barely scored over 5 points per game and returned for a second year under coach Mike White. A 6'5", wiry point guard, Mann is living up to the hype in his sophomore season for the Gators. He has shown some impressive flashes as a playmaker and continued growing as a shooter, re-entering himself into NBA draft conversations. The first thing that immediately stood out to me about Mann was the way he drives to the basket. Mann reportedly gained 18 pounds before his second year at Florida, but he still weighs in at just 190 pounds. Despite that, Mann is not afraid of contact. He drives to the rim fearlessly and doesn't mind having to face stronger or taller defenders. Mann plays tough, always trying to overcome his physical limitations. He can go into the chest of his defender or come up with creative finishes to avoid being stopped by length. Because of his slight frame, it can often seem like Mann is smaller than 6 foot 5. Mann currently finishes 58% of his close twos, which is a decent number. Even when he isn't scoring, Mann's aggressiveness can result in free throws, which he makes at an 83% clip. However, Mann has some clear limitations, particularly when it comes to his athleticism. The Florida guard is much more of a below the rim athlete, meaning that he isn't going to explode off the floor for crazy finishes or huge dunks. This can hamper his finishing at the rim, particularly when he is up against big time athletes. Here for instance, Mann gets to the basket but has to pass it off at the last moment when he realizes that he won't be able to finish. Mann could still improve athletically though. Like I said, he put on muscle and supposedly grew an inch. He might also get better with improved spacing at the NBA level, but for now, this is an area of concern. Luckily, Mann has an in-between game which helps diminish some of my worries. Mann is armed with a floater that goes extremely well with his soft touch. He has employed this shot more and more as the season has gone on and has had pretty good results with it. In my opinion, this is a shot that Mann needs to have in his arsenal. It's encouraging that he already takes and makes this floater at the college level since he will need it in the NBA, especially early on I think. One thing to work on though is that Mann will always go to his right hand. South Carolina did a good job exposing this, crowding Mann's right side and making him uncomfortable. Going forward, he will need to perfect this same shot, but using his left hand instead. I also think that Mann has shown some interesting flashes decelerating and then getting into a shot. At times, Mann has been able to stop on a dime before going up. This isn't something that he does on a consistent basis just yet, but it would be a great arrow to add to his quiver. In terms of his outside shot, Mann has seen vast improvement from his freshman year to his sophomore year. Mann shot 28% in his first season at Florida, but is now shooting 40% from deep. He has a bit of a low release, but he is making about 2 triples per game. Mann has also shown himself capable of making deep threes when defenses go under in pick and roll situations. If Mann can make his opponents pay when they dare him to shoot, that goes a long way in unlocking the rest of his game particularly the driving that we touched on at the start of the video. When Mann is able to set his feet and hold his follow through, his shot has a good chance of going in, especially if he's letting it fly facing the basket from the center of the floor. Only about 40% of Mann's threes are assisted, which bodes well for him in terms of self-creation. However, I believe that Mann still has a long way to improve as a shooter off the dribble. This was his biggest weakness in the tape that I watched. Mann looked much more comfortable driving to the rim or pulling up with plenty of space, rather than creating separation after a few dribbles and then getting his shot off. At this stage in his development, Mann does not find it easy to make space for himself. He is only making 33% of his two-point jumpers, and I believe some of it has to do with his footwork. Mann prefers to use short, choppy steps rather than broad strokes, so to speak, meaning that maybe he doesn't create as much distance between himself and his defender as he should. This also means that Mann isn't truly on balance, which then makes already difficult shots just a little bit harder. But in all fairness, Mann has to create his own offense a lot, and in the NBA, I think his role will be a lot smaller, at least initially. Hoopmath.com indicates that none of Mann's two-point jumpers have been assisted, 
And yet, these shots make up more than a third of his offense. Florida hasn't used man in a significant off-the-ball capacity so far, but the few signs have been good. At 6'5", I think that man has the size to play the off-guard role, particularly if his three-pointer is legit. Mann is only averaging about 3.5 assists per game, but I think it's more important to look at his assist percentage. That tells us roughly how many buckets Mann assisted while on the floor, and it has skyrocketed from 7% to 22% this season, and proves that Mann has been the Gators' main playmaker. I'm a big fan of Mann in the pick and roll especially. He is able to make good decisions while playing with patience and poise. Generally speaking, Mann doesn't get rushed when playing around with ball screens. He can pass on the move, hitting his teammates in great positions for them to score. Man should see plenty of pick and roll action in the NBA, as is the case for most NBA point guards. Look at this dish against West Virginia. Here against Tennessee, he looks off to the wing but actually makes the accurate lob pass for the dunk. Or here versus Kentucky, he deals with the high hedge and fires a picture perfect pass to the roller. Man is also adept at finding 3 point shooters out of pick and rolls. His rhythm is usually so under control that he has more than enough time to play with his head up, find where there is a disadvantage on the floor, and then exploit those numerical mismatches. Man is equally comfortable playing with bigs who roll and bigs who pop. The one thing I wish we could have seen though is Man playing with a more explosive center. Florida usually has Colin Castleton out with Man, and he is more of a back to the basket big. But for all the goodness man can bring in passing out of screens, I think he can still stand to improve his handle, especially under pressure. Man doesn't tend to get rushed, but the few times that happens to him is when the second defender meets him high in the pick and roll. When this happens, man can get flustered and is more prone to making mistakes. Florida's game against Kentucky was a good example of this. We typically tend to think of Kentucky as having NBA caliber athletes, so it was an interesting test for man that he had mixed success with. John Calipari had Kentucky aggressively blitz Mann in ball screens, and it took him a little while to get adjusted. Over these clips, we can see how Mann turned the ball over three times when he was met up high by the Wildcats and pressured on the ball. I also have to once again make note of Mann's athletic limitations. Since he doesn't have much burst or explosiveness, the Gators guard can struggle to turn the corner at times. We see this here against Tennessee where he can't come off the ball screen and eventually has to pass the ball off. The same thing happens here against Auburn, when Mann is switched onto JT Thor, one of their bigs. He cannot beat him off the dribble and has to toss up a wild shot that he misses. Admittedly, I am higher on Mann offensively than defensively. I think that he can and will be targeted on this end of the floor early in his NBA career, and he will have to definitely work hard to improve. To start, I think that Mann gives up dribble penetration too easily. Sure, he's really thin and reportedly lacks wingspan, but he can play defense far too upright, not getting low to the ground enough, or moving his hips, and this makes it too easy for the attacker to get past him. Mann could also stand to be more focused when playing off the ball. Here, he gambles, and it leads to an open 3 that South Carolina does not capitalize on. Or here, Mann leaves a 38% career 3-point shooter in Rich Kelly wide open. Lastly, Mann gets caught in the middle of no man's land here. I'm not sure what he's doing really, but he gives up the back cut and the floater. Mann's closeouts are inconsistent as well. There are times where he will lose control and foul. He needs to be more disciplined to not get himself in possible foul trouble or give the other team easy free throws. However, not everything makes for grim reading. When he is engaged, Mann is pretty decent at cutting off drives. He tends to do better when opponents are diagonal to the basket, rather than facing it head on. In those situations, Mann plays the angles better and is able to get stops. I'm also intrigued by some of the signs that Mann has flashed of understanding team defense. He is not much of a rim protector right now, mostly because of his size, but maybe he will be able to help out in this department in the future. Despite his flaws, Mann is averaging over a steal and a half per game. Mann can make the right rotations on defense to stop opponents from getting easy shots. I'm not sure he will be effective here early on in the NBA, but I think that this is at least worth mentioning and watching out for in the future.
Now, I know that this video might seem a little bit out of left field, especially after the guys that I've showcased as of late. You know, the likes of Moses Movie, Jaden Springer, Jalen Johnson. All of those guys are much more buzzworthy heading into the draft this summer compared to someone like Trey Mann. But with this video, I wanted to illustrate an argument that I really want to make, and it's one that I think that very good college point guards can translate over to the NBA level, and that this is something that has been happening increasingly as of late. Look no further than Jalen Brunson in Dallas and Devontae Graham in Charlotte. Both of those guys were very good college players who had question marks about them headed into the draft, but now they have carved out a role in the league and they are very valuable pieces to their team. I think that Trey Mann is well positioned to become yet another one of those examples, as I think his playmaking and his shooting will translate over to the next level. I don't really have any major concerns about Mann's playmaking, particularly in the pick and roll. That's the bread and butter of most NBA attacks, and I think that Mann will be very comfortable. Maybe a little bit of an adjustment period, as is the case with every rookie, but he will get there in time and be very good at it. With his shooting, I understand that there might be some more questions. We don't know if we're dealing with a lucky sample size this year after his freshman slump at Florida, but I do think that he has soft touch, his mechanics, generally speaking, don't look that bad, even though, like I said, his shot release is a little bit low, and I think that he is a willing and capable shooter in time. If I had to compare Trey Mann to one NBA player, it would be Shea Gilgis Alexander. I'm going to leave a comparison of the two down there below, but I do think that there are some similarities, although Shea was a much better scorer, he was a little bit craftier with the ball, maybe he showed a little bit more passing and he was more important, I don't want to say for his team, but I think as an on-court presence, he was a little bit more important in that he carried more weight than what Mann is currently doing at Florida. But still, if Mann becomes a poor man's version of Shea at the next level, that is still a pretty good player. As always, make sure to leave a comment below telling me what you think of Trey Mann and with any other feedback that you might have. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys next time.